There's my shipment from Battleborn. Should have some Victron inverters in there and some more Battleborn batteries for the bus. All kinds of goodies. There's my haul. So here's the goodies in this box. I have two of the VE bus smart dongles. And these will allow me to communicate via Bluetooth to both of my power inverters. Uh, and then to get a couple of the larger fuses for them. And then this Orion inverter is gonna take the 24 volt and convert it down to 12 volt for me. And it's at 70 amps. So that'll power the rest of my house systems, like my water pump and uh, you know LED lighting and things like that. So I'll still be able to use all the 12 volt stuff that's on the bus currently hooked up to the house system, and then the 24 volt stuff is gonna power the inverters. So here's the rest of my haul here. Um, two different 3000 watt inverters. These are 24 volt uh, from the Victron, the Multi Plus. And then I got a couple more of the Battleborn batteries. Uh, we already have 600 amp hours in there. This is gonna bring us up to 800 amp hours, but by the time we go to 24, or 40, ugh, by the time we go to 24 volts, we'll have um, 400 amp hours at 24 volts. I was a little more comfortable with that instead of less. Um, so we're gonna hook these up um, on one inverter on each leg of the 50 amp. So we're not doing split phase or anything like that. We're just making it the easy way. And then that way, if we're not at 50 amp, and we're plugged into uh, having to use like 30 amp or uh, 20 amp with the pigtail, the system won't know the difference. Um, I just think that's gonna be the easiest way for us. It's gonna use a little bit more power because they're both always gonna be on. Um, but I believe I'm going to kind of work my electrical panel out so that it, one inverter can be turned off and that won't affect anything in the system that needs to be on all the time. So like our refrigerator, computers, uh, you know, like the, the bedroom, kitchen, one, you know, the main outlets in the kitchen and stuff like that, those will all be on one breaker and one of the rooftop airs. And then the other rooftop air, and then like when my wife has like uh, a separate, uh, the, the main reason I went with two of these is because when she does cooking and stuff like that, I wanted her to be able to uh, you know, with the 2000 watts that we currently have, she can choose like one cooking device at a time, be it the microwave or the induction cooktop uh, or something like that. So she'd have to, you know, turn, do one thing at a time. Well, now she can do multi, multiple things with this, but we're, we're going to make sure that it's wired. Everything's on separate breakers in the bus already. Um, but I just want to make it where she can use two different cooking devices at once and not affect her as far as that goes. And then we're going to add a bunch more solar to the roof of the bus, which is gonna be a fun project in the future too. But this, this whole install with these is gonna be great. So we're gonna get started. Step one is MRTFM, which means mostly read the freaking manual. I've, I've installed a whole bunch of power inverters uh, just on my buses alone, probably six, seven. Um, but this is the first time I'm doing two of them together and uh, they're both pass through. And because I'm 50 amp, I'm, just, I'm going to read this. There's a few settings on here that I need to go through. There's a lot of like dip switches and things like that. So it, it's not. I haven't read this yet, but yeah, there's there's a lot of configurations that can be done. I need to kind of figure out ahead of time what is the best way to do it. But after talking to the guys at Battleborn, um, it really seems like the way for me to do it. But I just discussed uh, two separate two inverters on one inverter on each leg of the. Uh, on each leg of the 50 amp and then that way I think that's just gonna be the simplest way for me to do that and I'll have enough power from anything it doesn't matter what I'm doing so I don't I don't think that's gonna I don't think anything is gonna be bad to do it this way okay a couple just four screws that hold the front on here and all those LEDs and stuff like that are actually mounted on the board so that's just on there Got a diagram on the back here. 
pretty simple stuff. Um, it's got these really nice connectors here to hold the cables. Um, and no chafing, anything like that. So, one thing, you know, by going to the lithium ion batteries, I'm saving weight uh, versus, you know, the lead acid batteries. But you start to make up for it with these inverters because these things weigh 50 pounds a piece. Um, so as far as the power goes here, AC in one is clearly labeled. Uh, line neutral ground. And then AC out one, line neutral ground. AC out two, line and neutral. Um, negative. And positive terminals for the batteries. So plenty of room to get the cables in there, the wires. Nice connections. This should all be real good. Okay, there's a quick installation guide here. Um, it's kind of telling you what you need and what's all the stuff that's not included. <laughs> I've got a fuse, I've got cable coming here. Should be here in a little bit. Uh, I'm assuming it's saying don't mount the battery right under there so you don't arc it out. Um, I assume that's what that means. This just tells you how to do the mounting. There's a little plate and then it'll hook on that and you can attach it. Take the cover off. Yeah, that's the back, how that hooks on there. And then there's probably a screw on the bottom. Once it's latched, latched into there and then it comes in. So one thing that I won't have is this ground going directly to the battery because I have a shunt between there. So it'll go to my ground at the shunt. They'll both go to that. The shunt measures voltage and amps and everything in and out. Kind of surprised they don't show you how to hook up a 24 volt. Since it's a 24 volt inverter, this might just be a generic one for all of them, but I'm kind of surprised they show the battery hooked up like that. It's not very often you find a battery that's 24 volt. Normally you got to hook series and then parallel. Uh, I don't have the control this that's going to plug in because I'm using the dongle, so it probably plugs in the same spot though. Just a guess. I haven't read the directions yet. Or it has its own spot. It's pretty close to that. Showing you how to hook up the ground to the case. AC out. AC in. Seems pretty simple. So here, this is explaining the AC out uh, one and two. AC two is something that will automatically switch off when it goes to battery power. So if it's passed through, the current will always be there. But when it switches to battery power, it would automatically disconnect it. Uh, so if there were certain things that you didn't want running off of the batteries that would just eat them up if you didn't have a good battery bank. Um, you know, we'll, I, and we're gonna add more here in the future as well. I, I'd really like to have, um, Ideally, I think 800 amp hours of um, 24 volt. So 
basically double what we have right now. Um, but for right now, if there's something on there, here it says like an air conditioner or an electric boiler or something like that that you don't want power uh, going to off of the batteries, you would hook that on the AC out to circuit. Um, but right now I'm not gonna have anything wired into that. And I'm gonna manage that myself. So here's a bunch of 4 aught cable, so big as your thumb. Uh, I got a bunch of connectors and shrink wrap for it. Uh, so we're going to start making all our connections on that. And then uh, I got another hard start capacitor for the air, rooftop air. I got one on the one air conditioner already. I wanted to put another one on the other one. So this is enough to get me started. So we're going to go start taking apart the electrical system on the bus uh, and get ready for the install. His tools, check the air and all those duels. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Well, he's got a long, hard ride in that pre war silver sides. Get that bus grease monkey on the road. Well, he's got that hammer down in that 47 hell. It's that bus grease monkey on the road. He travels all around and he's coming to your town. Get that bus grease monkey down the road. that bus grease monkey do his thing 30 years behind that barn cause it don't run worth a darn watch that bus grease monkey make it sing he knows in detroit there's no doubt upside down and inside out it's that bus grease monkey don't you know saving buses far and wide in that old blue silver sides it's that bus grease monkey don't you know it's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Get that bus grease monkey down the road. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know?